Yer. Many white musicians such as Tommy Richmond use hip hop and black culture to gain popularity only to disown the genre once they've achieved mainstream success. This video will explore how this trend exploits the culture with a specific focus on Tommy Richmond's rise and transformation using Post Malone's journey to highlight common patterns and I've already made my video on that and I'll leave a link in the description. Hip hop at its roots is a black art and its growth into a dominant global cultural force is due in part to the continued access and majority that black folks have maintained within the genre. Continually we see styles and creative flares that have been influenced by hip hop and by extension those growing up in an urban environment. The frustration comes from the repeated attempts of artists from outside of hip hop that come to exploit the genre and fans. It's something that's happened time and time again. So why are we surprised? White artists have been using black art or casually pushed as if they were artists of color. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. So you say you wanna talk, I don't. Say you wanna change, I won't. Yes, yeah, like that. Had a chance, won't take it back. Now what would you think about that? When the very, very white singer Pink got her start, her aesthetic, speech pattern, and music videos were full of black culture signifiers. And while Pink herself never claimed she was anything but white, she was commonly mistaken to be a light-skinned black woman or biracial woman. And whether intentional or not, she didn't do anything to calm the rumors, but rather fuel them, almost playing up her alleged racial ambiguity because she knew the buzz it would bring. I'm like, whatever, like, I'm a mutt, we all are. We all came from the same place, God. And <laughs> that's how I explain it. We're all pink on the inside, whatever you want to call it. I don't care if you respect me, I respect you. And if you're ignorant, then I don't have anything to do with you. Her label clearly had other things in mind when they were establishing her as an artist. And I remember the conversations. If you're over 30, you probably remember them too. Combine this image with those vocals and push it on every hip hop and R&B station, you can see how some people are confused. Nothing like a black scent and some bronzer to get the people talking. But to be fair to Pink and my next reference, they didn't instigate any assumptions about their race. They just benefited from music labels exploding their creative range and the artistic palette of America. There's a good chance you heard this at least twice a year growing up. I guess you wonder where I've been. And how many of us knew that the singer was this man? This is Bobby Caldwell, and boy, that man can sing. Or at least he could before his passing in 2023. Now, Bobby Caldwell released that song in 1978, and it was a hit on soul and R&B charts and earned an impressive 9 spot on the Billboard 100. But in my opinion, Bobby got boned. For starters, during the lead up to the release of the record, Bobby was more or less hidden from public eye. His producers insisted on leaning into the fact that people would think Caldwell was black. Here's the album art, and sure, tons of artists don't have their image on their records, but for someone releasing their first single to not do any press runs or photo shoots, kinda shows a lack of forethought. I mean, look at the debut music video for this song. That fade from black is deliberate unveiling of the true artist, like a musical bait and switch. But I think that backfired. No one could associate an image with the music and judging by the reactions when Bobby Caldwell passed, most people still didn't know 45 years later. And in that span of time, not much has changed in regards to certain artists exploiting fans, it's just more intentional now. The genre has become a gateway for artists seeking crossover appeal, and I probably don't need to remind anyone of this tragedy. Before it morphed back into this. What we see is black culture used as a trend. Many elements of black culture, music, fashion, and slang are commodified and turned into marketable trends by the mainstream. The Kim K aesthetic that a lot of women were chasing? Black. Bamboo earrings? Black. Bantu knots? Black. The internet slang including words like bass, dripped, or riz? Black. White musicians use trap beats, slang, and hip hop fashion to align with what's trending in pop culture. That's it. Not because they didn't enjoy the genre, not because the speech patterns are natural to them, but because hip hop is and has always been synonymous with cool. Put it like this. We've had some stinker hip hop releases in the past few years. The only artists doing huge numbers are the bigs. And hip hop, while slipping in and running for most popular music in America, still maintains a large part of the market. The largest growing sector is Latin music, and it's something I hadn't really processed 
Then I realized I had this song on my Spotify like playlist for weeks. The music industry commodifies black culture and often promotes white artists in black genres because they're perceived as more marketable to mainstream white audiences. And black artists in white genres are honestly completely overlooked by wider white audiences. Beyonce dropped one of the best albums of the year and got zero country nominations. It's one thing not to win, but to not get nominated shows severe bias and it's not about talent. Beyonce is the biggest icon in America while catering to a diverse palette. While you have Taylor Swift who pretty much only caters to straight white women unless it's time to queer bait. I'm serious, Taylor Swift's black fan base makes up 13%, Asian at 9% and the rest are white. Meanwhile Beyonce fans tend to be more progressive as she has a more diverse fan base across the board. But no, pasty poly pocket is the wave. Fuck outta here. This cycle is not new and we shouldn't be surprised. White artists have a luxury that black and brown artists don't have and Tommy Richmond types exploit. Tommy blew up with his track Million Dollar Baby, a song so popular that it currently sits at 63 million views on YouTube. And most of us aren't using YouTube as our primary source of music. Everything from the beat to the vocal distortion are not to hip hop culture and, well, how often do you see that aesthetic in country or rock music? What about the mannerisms? This is cultural vulture behavior to the core. It'd be like me slapping on a MAGA hat and going anti-DIE. Sure, I'd definitely get the bag, that's the easiest grift in America, but it'd be just as genuine as Tommy Richmond. And he's gotten himself into a bit of jam with fans stating that he's not a hip-hop artist. Hmm, that sound familiar to anyone else? A white artist that lands a smash hit with hip-hop audiences just to later attempt to distance himself from the genre? I'm sure I'll think of it in a second. Million Dollar Baby isn't Tommy's first single, it's just the first one to rise to this level of popularity, but Tommy has been aligning himself with hip-hop for a long time. The oldest video on his YouTube channel is a track called Ballin' Stalin that was initially released on SoundCloud in 2016. And it sounds like hip-hop to me. And I hear you. Well, of course it does, Charlie. He's a hip-hop artist. Yeah? Maybe you should remind Tommy of that. And I'm going to call it right now. In less than three years, more than likely under two, Tommy Richmond is going to be Morgan Wallen. Post Malone did the same thing, distanced himself from hip hop while lying about it to his fans when the backlash hit. When out of nowhere you have an entire sonic shift to hip hop, people are going to notice and finally fans are calling artists out. Sometimes it's more obvious like Two Hollis who I only clicked on because I thought it'd be some indie rock. Maybe something dark and broody like the good old goth kids from back in the day. Their early songs are vaguely hip hop adjacent, that kind of sound you get from experimental acts that can't sing, so they add that staccato rhythm to how they speak. Think early Red Hot Chili Peppers. And if you don't have a reference, Google it, it will only take you 15 seconds. Just figure out what I'm talking about. Now it's just like half the nonsense getting pushed from pseudo underground artists, they aren't so much underground as they are just in line for their big artificial break. Artists like Two Hollis haven't, but will, distance themselves from hip hop. They need to the boost the edge that hip hop can give an act, but they'll go back to their roots or mature out of the genre. And statements like that imply the genre is juvenile, that only the immature would stay within the field. It's part of the reason white rappers are under more scrutiny, and another big reason whether they want to admit it or not, is that they have an audience that no other rapper has. White people that don't like hip hop. There is a subset of Shady fans and Post Malone before the switch up that do not listen to any other rap music except for those two, and maybe Tom McDonald in extreme cases, and generally call them the GOATs. Do you think Shady doesn't know that? He knows how to pander to his white base while still masquerading as progressive. Like his kneel during a Super Bowl performance. Just stay on the edge enough so that progressives will go, hey, Eminem is one of the good ones. But he also did it in a way where it looked like one of those superhero landings, which a lot of viewers honestly thought it was. You're gonna do a superhero landing. Wait for it! Woo! Superhero landing! I mean, is that anywhere you've seen anyone take a knee? And yet his fans can like whatever they want, but what does it say about a demographic that lacks the context to make an accurate decision being so resistant to acknowledging other artists within the same field? Can Monet be the best painter if you've never seen a Rembrandt? 
Can LeBron be the best baller of all time if you've never seen a Jordan game? The difference between appreciating black culture and appropriating it for personal gain is intent and understanding. Cultures are more than just the signifiers an outsider can easily identify. Regardless of your background, you are more than your style of dress, haircut, or speech patterns. And when that is acknowledged, you get issues like this. Musicians that sell out, and then sell out. Early Tommy Richmond music isn't bad, and while raw, it feels organic. But what if I were to show you these visuals for Million Dollar Baby? Does he look comfortable? It looks like a divorcee trying to bond with his new black stepson. It looks like Steven Seagal with a mixtape. It looks like if Weekend at Bernie's happened at a trap house. This pattern of diving headverse into a realm you do not really want to be part of harms black musicians who create and live within the genre. White musicians get to benefit from hip hop's global popularity while black artists often remain marginalized in the industry. That's why when I came across this article on Billboard, I knew what was going to happen. Here's a brief excerpt. The singer out of Virginia, whose single Million Dollar Baby went viral and was on its way to dominating the slumber until Kendrick and Drake battle thwarted those dreams, sent out a now-deleted tweet seemingly distancing himself from the genre that propelled him into sudden stardom. I'm not a hip-hop artist, he said before trying to clarify what he meant after the tweet started to take off. In a follow-up tweet, he does try to save face. I'll say again, I'm thankful for everything. I'm saying I don't want to be boxed in. I grew up on hip-hop, but I'm a singer. And again, it sounds a lot like Post Malone. But Tommy, be for real. You put together the music, you're a grown-ass man, so you probably dress yourself, and you chose the hip-hop signifiers. And if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then guess what? Yeah, I this trend affects authentic black voices in the genre, while white artists sometimes overshadow genuine creators. It's the same pattern that Post Malone used. He rose to fame with white Iverson leaning into hip-hop aesthetics and sound. Or early on, just like Tommy, he tried to distance himself, even turning down a XXL cover spot when the freshman class was still kind of relevant. Then his later comments about distancing himself from the genre, describing hip-hop as shallow in interviews only proved what other people thought for a while. Post Malone is a vulture. Only time will tell if Tommy is. But nah, of course he is. Artists like Post Malone just reinforce the idea that Tommy Richmond is not an isolated case. The similarities between their career trajectories are just too convenient to be coincidental. And just like lazy rappers are pulling on the Playboy Cardi formula, artists from outside hip-hop will pull a Post Malone. Both styles of artists want to use a genre or specific styles as a stepping stone, then move away from it once established into a broader pop music landscape. The industry's role in elevating these artists quickly is sometimes to the detriment of black creators who have worked really hard for recognition. Often predominantly white, fans enable this behavior by supporting these artists during their hip-hop phase and not holding them accountable for abandoning the genre. The constant borrowing and abandoning of hip-hop affects the genre's authenticity and sustainability. It's how butt rock took over the airwaves. Watered down acts being pushed to the front until this homogenous stew of mediocre meat chunks pressed into a patty and shoved across a counter or all the pilot starts to recognize as food. As hip hop grows, will it franchise out like fast food joints? Sure, Burger King is different from Taco Bell and Pizza Hut is wholly different from the both of them, but they're all still the same generic artificial slop owned by the same parent company. The consequences of white artists profiting from a genre tied to black struggle, then turning their backs on it detracts from the true skill that their fans overlook when they follow their favorite non-rapper out of the genre. We shouldn't be surprised by this trend, but it's also why we must remain critical of artists like Tommy Richmond and Post Malone. Just like fast food synthetic garbage, big companies pink washing during Cancer Awareness Month, or your ex texting you at midnight saying they miss you, it's not real and probably never has been.